this is our 16th Tolton Lecture, and Dr. Shannon D. Williams will be sharing with us her research and her experience and what she has learned about the experience of black Catholic religious women in the United States. Dr. Williams, will you share with us this day how your research came about? Uh, thank you, uh, it's truly a privilege. Um, honestly, by chance, mm -hmm. um, although if you ask the women that, I was, that I've interviewed, they would also say that it was something, clearly mm -hmm. sort of I was called by God to do this work. Um, but nine years ago when I began this project, I was completely unaware of the history of African American women religious. I was completely unaware of the history of black female religious life in the church. I had never seen a black nun depicted outside of a Hollywood film. Um, at no point in my Catholic or public school education was I ever taught about the history mm -hmm. of black uh, women religious or mm -hmm. the long-standing history of Catholicism among black people around the world. Um, honestly, I was looking for a, graduate to a topic for a graduate seminar paper at Rutgers University, and I stumbled upon an article, a newspaper article in the Pittsburgh Courier, which announced the formation of the National Black Sisters Conference in 1968 and I experienced what I can only call a metanoia. Um, for the first time, I had seen sisters depicted. Um, I had the names of sisters. Uh, many of these women had desegregated their communities after World War II. Mm -hmm. um, and I was uh, immediately sort of wanting to know more about these women. Mm -hmm. um, I had a list of names from the newspaper articles. I had also Googled the National Black Sisters Conference and I found that their papers had just been archived at Marquette University. Mm -hmm. But with the initial list, I started writing and calling mother houses to see if some of these women were still alive and if they would be willing to be interviewed for my paper. And the response was an overwhelming yes. In fact, one sister, I remember it very vividly, she said, you know, we've been waiting yes. on someone to tell this yes. story. Yes. And initially the project began as a study of the National Black Sisters Conference, mm -hmm. and it expanded to what it is today to look at, to provide a comprehensive look at the history of black women religious in the United States. Really after I was able to track down Sister, uh, Dr. Patricia Gray, who was formerly Sister M. Martin DePores Gray, mm -hmm. who was Pittsburgh's first black religious sister of mercy and the chief architect of the National Black Sisters Conference. Um, you know, and I knew it was gonna be difficult. Um, many people had said that she had been, um, uh, he hesitant to talk about her experiences in religious life. In fact, she had turned down an opportunity to be interviewed for Eyes on the Prize, and so I knew that Ooh. it would be a challenge. It took me mm -hmm. six months to find her, and another six months to um, convince her to interview mm -hmm. me, uh, to let me interview her, and so it began in that way. And when she decided to share her story with me, she was very adamant that, uh, or really uh, encouraging towards me to really expand the project. Mm -hmm. um, that it could not simply be about her or the National Black Sisters Conference, that, that there had been so many black women who had embraced the religious state in the United States. Mm -hmm. And one could not fully understand the importance and the significance of the National Black Sisters Conference without looking at that earlier history. Yes. And so that's really how it came to sort of look, how I've sort of looked at it beginning in the 19th century in the slave South and bring it, bringing their history all the way into the 21st mm -hmm. century. Well, I can tell that you are very passionate about this topic. I mean, it just comes across. What have you found most surprising, or what have you found surprising about your research? You know, it's an interesting, it's a wonderful question. It's something um, I think about a lot in part because had I known what I would find, I'm not sure I would have undertaken the project. Mm. Um, I came to this project at a moment in which I was about to leave my church. Uh, to, I am a cradle Catholic, um, but I was planning to leave the church and I stumbled upon this project or I was called to this project at a, a critical moment. Um, and, these many, and these women's testimonies, um, they are not only testimonies of an unyielding faith, but they are also testimonies of survival. Um, many of these women who desegregated their communities endured the unspeakable. Um, they encountered racism within the church, um, within their communities. Um, I will never cease to be amazed by the stories of the women who traveled sometimes hundreds and thousands of miles away from their hometowns to enter communities that accepted African Americans. Mm -hmm. We have forgotten about sort of these exclusionary racial, uh, exclusionary admissions policies um, that simply barred U.S. born black women um, from entering into communities. And so I think that in itself has been perhaps the most surprising, not only the gut-wrenching testimonies, but the unyielding faith mm -hmm. in the face of unholy discrimination. And I think for me, um, 
those stories um, are not only a part of the American Catholic experience, but if we truly want to move towards a, a space for reconciliation and racial justice, then we must confront the church's history of racism and exclusion. And I think, I think sisters' stories help us to begin that conversation. Well, this is a powerful testimony that you've given this day, and this is important research. Tell us a little bit about the title of your forthcoming <laughs> book and how you came across Indeed. on that title? Um, well, the title is Subversive Habits, The Untold Story of Black Catholic Sisters in the United States. Um, and I came to it in part from, an, uh, from a quote that appeared in a publication from the National Black Sisters Conference. Um, and at that particular moment, uh, black sisters were mobilizing across the country to stop the closings of predominantly African American and inner city Catholic schools. And it was a quote that appeared and it said, education and religion are the first two subversive forces that an oppressed people can use uh, in the fight against liberation. Religion mm -hmm. is the guts of all human is the guts of all human existence. Um, it can either uh, suppress a people or free a nation. And I thought yes. it was yes. um, very appropriate, but also thinking about the double entendre of subversive habits. Mm -hmm. uh, we think about um, the reality. Um, Black women uh, were the first to embrace the religious state in the church. Indeed, uh, black women or women of black African descent founded the world's first monastery for women in the first century. It was St. Ephigenia. And if we think about sort of that history and also the contemporary history of sisters, their history predates the development of female religious life in the church in Europe by two centuries. And currently, if we go by the church's statistics, the future face of the Catholic sister is going to be brown and most likely African. Mm -hmm. And yet these women were invisible to me. And so what did it mean for a woman of black African descent to embrace the religious state in the United States in a mm -hmm. moment, um, at various moments in American history when black women's bodies were not their own if they were enslaved, but even during segregation when the vast majority of white congregations had all black or anti-black admissions policies. And so not only are these women, sort of the idea of them embracing the religious state and sort of declaring their right to their body um, and sort of saying by themselves um, that they belong to God, um, they're also rejecting sort of an ideal of, of racial segregation and exclusion that says that there are no such things as virtuous black women. And so for me, on the one hand, I think it's a very subversive act. I think it's a very uh, radical act, but also in terms of what they are doing themselves. Black sisters are the progenitors of black Catholic education. And in the absence, longstanding absence of a significant African-American clergy, black sisters were the spiritual leaders of the African-American yes. community. And so with their labors, they not only ensure the development of the African-American Catholic community, but it's survival. And so not only are these women in terms of their habits, but also in terms of the subversive labor in which they engage. Without mm -hmm. sisters, we would not have a non-racist articulation of Catholicism in the United States. Religious life would not have been possible if not women, if, if not black women had dared to embrace the religious state. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting sort of phenomenon when we think about this history. Although Catholicism, Catholicism is the most popular religion among black people in the world, um, it never has enjoyed the kind of popularity among African American Catholics. And I think that there, there's an interesting history because of that. Nonetheless, it is black women in the United States who found the Western world's first congregations op freely open to black women and girls. Mm -hmm. And so there is something very unique, something very powerful um, about the articulation of Catholicism that emerged, black Catholicism that emerged in the United States. And one cannot understand that history without understanding the history of black sisters. Mm -hmm. And indeed, the lived experiences of black sisters not only remind us that it really challenges what we know and what we think we know about the American Catholic experience. Mm -hmm. And so the central argument of my work is that the lives and history of black Catholic sisters matters. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, yes. And until we know that history, I do not think that we'll be able to engage in the radical truth telling that uh, Father Bri Brian Massingill calls us to do to be able to really sort of reckon with this history of racial injustice to begin to sort of begin the process of reconciliation. Yes, well thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Dr. You. Williams for sharing this with us. And I remember another quote that comes to mind is to know your history is to know your greatness. And so this day you're sharing with us the greatness of our community, and of our church. So thank, thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. been a privilege. Thank you. This has been a presentation of Catholic Theological Union. For additional videos and podcasts, or to learn more, please visit www.ctu.edu or visit learn.ctu.edu.